So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Today we're going to be looking at the Anbernic RG351P, which is a retro handheld uh, games machine, um, which I picked up almost a week ago, and I've been hard, hard at it, playing at it and discovering all the things that it can do. Let's have a look at it. So this is the actual handheld console uh, straight out the box and uh, I've got the nice white colour which you can actually get black and, and do a few other colours um, but this is a sort of an upgraded model to the RG351M so to speak um, because it can it's capable of playing Dreamcast, uh, Nintendo 64 and amongst many others um, it, some of them doesn't play great but most of them it does which we'll have a look at in the video so on the back you've got sort of thumbsticks either side, you've got the d-pad, select button, start button and you've got your X, Y and A, B buttons. Uh, on the top here you've got your charging slot and you've also got, this is for your Wi-Fi adapter, you've got L1, L2, R2 and R1 button over here. Um, on each the side you've got your on off switch, you've got your volume, volume wheel over here. On this side we have the memory card You've got your two speakers here and a reset button. So, just to say out of the box, you also get uh, one of these, which is a Wi-Fi adapter, and um, which plugs onto the top of the the unit. So as you can see, it plugs in the top here. It, it also charges through this slot, and um, which you can connect to your Wi-Fi, um, quite easily, and it works quite well. Um, I think the earlier models did have Wi-Fi included. Uh, in the actual unit, but there was apparently sort of noise issues with it, which they've decided to remove that and give you an adapter instead. So let's have a look at the comparisons to other sort of handheld consoles for size par comparison. So this is the Pocket Go. As you can see, the Pocket Go is much, much smaller, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to upgrade a little bit, because the Pocket Go is just a little bit smaller. The, the, the screen size, as you can see, is is much smaller, uh, smaller. The unit itself is tiny, um, but it's still a very capable machine, and there is practically half the price of the the RG three five one P. This is about thirty five pounds, um, and the RG three three five one P is about seventy nine, ninety nine, eighty pounds there or thereabouts. Um, also, comparing it to the Evercade, as you can see, the Evercade is much larger. It's got a slightly larger screen. You can see it's it's just a lot a few millimeters wider um, and it's a, a few millimeters higher as well. Um, but you can see there's more space for your hand on the Evercade for to hold it, but it doesn't have the thumbsticks. And the other important thing from this is that it's cartridge based. You can't add your own games to this. It's purely cartridge based only. Whereas this console, you can add your own games via the memory card provided. Now let's have a look at some of the games. So let's look at the console, booting up for the first time in the standard operating system that comes with the unit. It comes already installed with RetroArch and the OS unit is playing as Emulec, um, which is called Emulation Station, which it likes to be known as. So straight out the... Sort of straight out you, you get... Hold on. So right away what you have installed as a lot of arcade games, Capcom, Dreamcast games, Neo Geo, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, lots. And there's already lots and lots of games already pre-installed. Nintendo 64, which it plays quite well. Um, Standard Nintendo, Neo Geo Pocket, PSP Portable, which is quite impressive. Uh, PlayStation games, which play fantastically well. Super Nintendo, Wonder Swan Color. And that, so that's what you get straight out of the box. Let's have a look at the actual games themselves. So, so there's plenty of games here, and generally all of these play quite well. Some of the sort of earlier systems, like some Dreamcast games, Nintendo 64 games, are a little bit sluggish, but they do play much better on the upgraded um, Arcos operating system, which we will also look at later on. Um, but I think to start off we'll maybe run um, some games just to see how it actually copes with them. Uh, I say the standard stuff like Mega Drive, um, Super Nintendo, they all play fantastically well. But let's have a look at, um, say, Mario Kart running. 
can see it all, it sounds really good. There's only a slight stutter. I think it's, it varies from game to game um, how well it, it plays. But generally, it's the, the emulation is actually really quite good. So it's probably some, some of the best I've seen on, on, on a sort of emulation console. Just some slight slowdown, you can hear the stutter and the, the sounds. You see, graphically it's really good. You can... Oh, what a great start I got there. You can actually adjust some of the graphics settings using the retroact in the, in the background, which I'll show you in a little minute. But you can see it actually plays really well. So if I jump straight into RetroArch, as you can see, you just click in the thumbsticks, you can jump to RetroArch and you can save states, um, you can sort of mess around with the drivers, the video outputs and, and such. Um, which is fine, it's quite time consuming if you want to go through all that, but it's, it's possible to improve the graphics slightly. Um, so to, to exit back to the main screen, you simply go to quit retroact at the bottom here and it jumps straight back to the main screen quite quickly you can see I have the little video playing for each game which is really helpful to actually see you know, the game um, and what it's like but that's not standard you need to set that up in the options and, and scrape the sort of details down off the internet using your Wi-Fi adapter which is here so let's have a look, let's have a look at a Dreamcast game running so Dreamcast um, generally plays quite well, but it plays better with the Arcos operating system. So let's have a look at um, Soul Calibur. I think on the original um, sort of core here, it's sort of a, a bit slow. But this is one of the reasons why I purchased this, because it plays Dreamcast games um, and it plays them quite well. I did try on the PlayStation Classic through RetroArch and it really didn't play good at all. It was just sluggish and pretty poor. You can see it sounds quite good. It looks really nice. See, it generally plays really well. It does play a lot better through Arcos, but um, out of the box it's really quite impressive. And this has to be one of my favourite um, Dreamcast games ever. I mean, it's absolutely outstanding. Played this a lot back in the day. And to play it again on this so well is absolutely outstanding. This has got to be a big selling point for me um, on the console. Whoa. You can hear and see it, it plays remarkably well. I don't think every game is perfect, much like the Nintendo 64, but in general I, th I think pretty impressive. So let's exit that again. Back to RetroArch. So just so you can actually access sort of different options here. You've got emulex settings, game settings, and all sorts of things you can do and updates and downloads. Um, and it takes a lot of time and it's time consuming to go through and have your different settings here. I don't know if you can quite make that out. But you can filter different games, game viewing styles, and advanced options. So there's plenty to look at and plenty to sort of mess around with. And um, there's so many games that are included. And again, you can add your own games. It's just as simple as putting in the memory card into your PC and add, drop the games into the, the game folders, um, which you'll see if you, you set up. Um, but all the games play really impressively. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the games I've actually added to the system, um, which I'll show you in a little sec. I've had already added, I think, quite a lot of different... Um, systems to it, so let's have a look. So on this part you see them there is systems displayed. So you can see I've already added 3DO games, Commodore Amiga games, Amstrad, Atari 2600, Atari 7800, Atari Lynx, Commodore 64, Coco Vision, um, and 
all of them play brilliantly. Some of them, it does take a bit of time to make sure you've got the right BIOSes in the BIOS folder. Um, you need to make sure you get the right cores. Um, and some play better than others. I'd say most play brilliantly, apart from perhaps uh, Atari Jaguar um, and some Nintendo 64 occasional, some Dreamcast. But in general, it plays really well. Um, 3DO doesn't play very well either. Um, but you can see there's a lot here that I have actually installed. Sega 32X games, Sega CD games, um, which is another selling point for me. I think one of the reasons why I wanted to, to purchase this was to play Sega CD games. So let's see, it's just loading in all the games I've now selected. And if we'll go back, it will update and we'll see some other games that I've added. So I've got in television, which let's, let's, let's actually have a look at it. So this is... Um, Astro Smash and see in television games play exceptionally well this game is is really quite addictive quite simple but it's actually a really good game um, I really do like this this game's actually coming to the Evercade on the Intellivision collection at some point hopefully this year um, and I do like this game <laughs> Very simple, but it's really, really addictive, and it plays brilliantly on this console too. It plays really good. So that that's not so. Let's kick back straight out of there again, and we'll go back to the main menu, hopefully. And we'll show you some of the other things that we've got set up. So, say so I've got Master System games set up, and they play brilliantly too. Mega Drive's already there. Um, this is a uh, sort of ports that you can download from the internet. We've got PSP games that work really well too. Some stuttering, or maybe show that shortly. Um, PlayStation games which they work without any hassle at all. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, these are just things you download off the internet. And here is Sega Thirty Two X games, um, which run really well. Let's have a look at uh, Knuckles Chaotix. Now these are not available right up the, out of the box. You need to create the folder uh, in the games folder on your memory card on your computer. And they all have to be worded the correct way. Like, like, Sega 32X has to be exactly that. Sega 32X all underscore. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for what the names of the folders should actually be. Because if you don't have the, the correct folder name, it will not find the games, which is really annoyingly frustrating. Like I said, it takes a lot of time and effort to get all these right, the right BIOS files, um, so the right naming conventions, so it's a bit time consuming and annoying, but once you get it set up, as you can see, look, this plays really well, and I never actually had this game, um, I did have a Sega 32X, but I never had this game, uh, I don't really recall if it got released in the UK. You can see it plays impressively well. So let's have a look at some more systems. So we've got the Sega CD as well which was one of the other reasons why I wanted to get this to play Snatcher and if we can see this it works brilliant. Let's have a look at it. Now that's another thing you need to be aware of is the, the sort of style type of game that you sort of download. It needs to be in the right format, it needs to be like binning queue files, it needs to be either in the zip folder, and it varies between um, between system, and I'll, I'll leave another link for a site which I've been using which tells you the right um, style of games to use um, for each system, and you have to experiment sometimes, and it, that's the time consuming nature of it. So try to find your way around RetroArch, try to understand what systems use watch files and what the name should be what bioses you need and it's time consuming and if you're not um, of that nature and you you don't fancy that challenge then you may not like this i mean it works well out the box but like if you're like me you want to explore what this system can do and that's what i've been doing mostly the last week um, and i've been enjoying it but it's been frustrating at the same time now this is one of my all-time favourite games, I'll have to say. It's just the story, the type of game, and fascinatingly, this is the only English port of this game. It was on the Saturn, it was on the PlayStation, it was on the MSX as well. Um, 
But this is the actually only English translated version. So we'll fast forward a little bit. As you can see it plays really well. There's no problem. Okay, let's talk to her. Oh yeah, the guys, that's Snatcher, I'm obviously going to play that quite a lot, but let's move on, it plays really, really well, and it's definitely a big selling point for me, uh, along with Dreamcast games, obviously. So there's, there's, there's Spectrum games as well, but um, on this version, it, maybe it's not easy to access the actual keyboard, it works better on the Arco EOS um, OS, which we'll see later on, um, which has the on-screen keyboard to be able to start some of these games, but it plays them really well, and it's this, there's no loading time on, on this either, which is impressive. And that's not always the case. Like, oh, we've got 3DO game Doom, but it plays really poorly, I'm afraid. It's quite sluggish. I think we really need to have a better core for, for 3DO games. Um, uh, something other that was a selling point for me was Amiga games. Now, let's have a look at um, Speedball. And this is probably the, the definitive version of Speedball for me. You just kind of have to bear with it a little bit. I mean, obviously back in the day it would have been quite some time to load in. But see, that's not too bad. So I've got it in custom, but you generally have to mess about with that, then save it. Um, but if we sort of see, look at all the different s screen types that you've got. Um, this is 3 to aspect ratio is the standard one. Um, but generally it's not great for everything. I'll leave it on that just now, just so we can actually get a, an idea of the game. Top game, probably, certainly up there. I definitely wasted a full summer. No, I say wasted. I spent a full summer actually playing this game. Yeah. Um, this was on the Commodore version, but this is probably the one of the best versions, especially graphically. Um, I'm not doing this justice at all, but it plays impressively well. And control-wise, it's fine. You can actually use the either the D-pad or the the thumbstick. Um, but. I think I generally prefer to play most of these games with the D-pad. I think the thumbsticks are just a little bit too low down to actually be you know, of use. I just felt that sometimes if you're trying to play the game like this, it feels actually quite awkward. Um, but Which is why holding it like this is better. Um, but I just wish there was a little bit more space. Maybe it could have been a little bit wider to, to sort of help a little bit with your hands. But yeah. So let's have a look at some more games, guys. So another format I've got loaded is, whoops, let's put it down a little bit, is uh, Amstrad. I've only got one game, but it's it plays really well. Um, I've loaded lots of Atari 2600 games. Let's have a quick look at this classic game. Now, obviously, this plays perfectly. It's obviously easier to play with the D-pad as well. Now, who doesn't like Keystone Capers? Simple game, but brilliant. Wait for the lift? Nah. <laughs> see, this is something I would really like to see an, an Activision cart on um, on Evercade. No, surely that's got to be a thing. This is just terrific. Perfect for handheld. Okay, we'll just go the long way. I mean, I have definitely played this game before. I played it on the Atari 2600, obviously. Um, but I don't think I actually owned the car. I think I, I, I got uh, loaned it off a friend many times just to play it because it's so good. But never actually owned it. Oh, he's getting away. No, he's not. We've we'll got him. Yeah, great game. Classic game. So next we have... There's Atari 7800 uh, games. Which play really well too. And also Atari Lynx games. Which I've added a couple. So let's have a quick look at um, Switchblade 2. Which I would have loved to have seen on one of the Lynx cartridges on the arcade. But didn't happen. We have got the original Switchblade. But not this version. I don't think this is the best version of Switchblade 2. 
it's most likely the Amiga version, but um, it still plays quite well. You see, this is Atari Lynx at the end playing, and it's pretty good. No problems at all. And it's actually quite an enjoyable game. Yeah, so see, it actually plays quite well. Let's move on to the next SAR format. So it's very quick to easily move between formats, and here's Commodore 64 games. Now, they play really well. The only problem is that the loading times are particularly slow. Um, let's see what one will we pick. They've got a few different sort of games on here. Um, let's have a look at Mayhem and Monsterland. Sort of one of the sort of latter games in the actual lifetime of the Commodore 64. Um, I think it was about 1993 or so when it got released, and by that time I had already moved on, unfortunately. You can see it loads up the, the basic screen, all, does it all for you, you don't need to do anything. So it's easy peasy. But it does take a little bit of time to load, just much like the Amiga games, it does take a little while, but it works fine. You just have to have a little bit of patience. It doesn't take any longer to load than it would have done back in sort of using the old tapes or discs. See, this is probably the slowest loading format on here that I've seen so far. Um, but it does work. I mean, if you just have to have a bit of patience and wait, it will work fine. Uh, there must be some options we can utilise through RetroArt that might make this quicker, perhaps. I need to do some digging. So, here we go. So you can change the, as you can see there's quite big borders, you can change the aspect ratio, no problem if you want to do that, and sort of widen the screen out a bit. Um, so that's all fine to throw a red track as usual using the two thumbsticks down here. But yeah, let's get started in the actual game, you can see it working. And generally it's just about jumping, collecting the dust, jumping on these bad guys' heads. See, it looks really good, it plays really well, um, which is impressive, I love it. This is another good reason to own this system if you love Commodore 64 games. I mean, there's very few systems that it doesn't actually play. There is some system that doesn't play great, um, like Atari Jaguar and 3DO don't play great, which we'll see later on. Hopefully we'll get some updates that might improve that, if you're interested in those systems. But most of the things it plays well, like this, I'm not going to show too many of the standard sort of things like Mega Drive and Nintendo. They all play brilliant. There's no, there's no problem with that. I've not seen many emulators that play them poorly, to be honest. Well, let's move on from that. Coco Vision, which I also play really well. Um, which maybe we'll quickly jump on. Um, well, maybe we should try some more Keystone Capers. <laughs> River Raid. Let's try some River Raid. Again, this would be another one we could add to the Activision uh, cart on Evercade if that ever happened. Simple game, but brilliant. You can see, here we go. Again, just like a lot of the other emulators, you need to make sure you have the right setup, the right folder names, the right BIOS files. Um, it's, it's tiring and tedious to do, but it does pay off. If you've prepared to put in that time to run your favourite systems, it pays off and, as you can see, it plays really well. Although I'm not playing it really well. <laughs> I did like this game, but I maybe think the Atari version was actually slightly better. Maybe I'm bi biased here. Never had a Coco Vision growing up. Or Coleco Vision. Not sure how best pronounce it. So these are all the, the pre-installed games. Now another game I really would like to show off is MSR. One of my all-time favourite Dreamcast games. Um, which plays really well. It's not perfect, but it does play really well. I do love hearing that Dreamcast sound. Interestingly, the Europe version was blue, the Dreamcast logo there. 
You know, I've already tried to play this on the PlayStation Classic and it doesn't play good, it just stutters all over the place. But through this, it, it's actually really impressive. It plays even better on the Arc OS um, as well, which I'll show you near the end of the video. So you try and jump straight into a, a quick game. So there's some slowdown on the, the menu here and there. Um, and the radio doesn't play great in games. We'll try and do a quick time attack. Just so that we can get an idea of, of what it's like. So in the actual game, the radio doesn't play. You can play random songs, but the actual radio, if anyone remembers the game, there was constant radio chatter. But it doesn't seem to work very well for some reason. But you can actually just play the songs if you, if you feel that way. But if you look at the game, the game plays brilliantly. Um, and it looks really good too. And, and it obviously goes by the internal clock. Um, what time of day it is, which was you know, brilliant back in the day. Um, as you can see, there's no really any issues playing this game. It, it handles so well. There's very little stutter and slow down with the graphics. It's like, wow. And this is what really blew me away. Playing this game again. This I spent so so much time on this game. Um and great fun. Great game. Love it. And if you're into Dreamcast and you love this game, wow, this is a must. This little handheld. Anyway, it well maybe something that I need to uh, sort of say here is that by default this game kicks in by using the, the triggers, which obviously remember you use the triggers up here, but it doesn't work great and you need to sort of mess around. You can see that uses the horn. You need to mess around and get the right setup. You can do that through RetroArch or even in-game to whatever setup that you would prefer to play with. Just something to, to sort of think about when you're playing this game. But yeah, let's kick back out of here again. Let's see what else we've got we could play. So we're going to play some of these standard games. They all play great. There's no problems with them. Um, Master System games as well. So what I'm going to do is jump off and show you the Arc OS um, operating system which I installed. Um, and it works really well. Let's have a look at it. So guys, I've uh, put the Arc OS on to a new memory card rather than writing over the old memory card. Um, I've sort of put it on to this one um, and copied all my games across. I'll leave a link in the description how to do that. I'm not going to show you because it's quite time consuming and there's other videos that you can watch that use this. Now this operating system is slightly different. But for me, that's probably the best one, I think. There's quite a few that you can actually choose from, but this one improves the Dreamcast playing. Um, it improves. You can also play Atari Jaguar. It gives a little bit of difference here, as you can see. And I need to up the, the actual brightness of the screen here. Display settings are way, way, way down for some reason. I'll just put them up for the sake of the video. Okay, so... As you can see, it's a slightly different style. You can obviously add favourites. You've got RetroArch straight from the main menu. Um, you can do play Pico 8 games. So it's most of the stuff we already had, but there's a few additions that... Um... Oh, yeah, you can Sega Saturn games work a lot better. Let's have a look at Sega Saturn. So it's not perfect again, but they do work. I think it's going to vary from game to game how successful they are. This game plays okay, it plays much better through the the MULEC, it's, it's sluggish. See so some parts that does play a little bit slower and sluggish, but when you actually get going it's, it's, it seems fine. Through the, the sort of MULEC it's really, it's almost pretty much unplayable. See it's not perfect. But it's actually not too bad. It's, it's at least it's playable here. I'm not really sure if I like this game or not. To be honest, I played it a few times and 
kind of a not too, too sure about it. It's, it's a very strange game. <laughs> but you see, it plays okay. No, it's nothing too bad at all, but I'm saying I'm honestly not entirely sure. It's, it's very different, isn't it? Even now, it's still very different. <laughs> but, you know, this is actually quite good. I think it, it's, it works really impressively well. I mean, I've seen it working on the few other systems and it's just stutters. It's, it's unplayable. It's just not worth investing time in. You just can't put up with the, the frame rates jotting on all over the place. But you can see, it's not bad. You can put up with it. Yep. It's not bad, I'll maybe have a look at some more Saturn games as we go on, and sort of different systems as well, how they play. Let's sort of move on quickly. Oh yeah, so to jump out of the games, um, you hold down, select, and then start twice to get out of the games, rather than the thumbstick way. So it's quicker to actually get out the uh, the games and start a new game, which is quite cool. Um, you can actually op um, access the RetroArch in the games by holding select and pressing X. And it doesn't seem to work with every sort of system, so I need to have a look at that. Again, if we have a look at um, Dreamcast games, it works so much better in this system than it does. It's quicker. What else have we got here that we didn't have? So most of the things we have, we've got a th yeah, obviously 3DO games. We've got Atari Jaguar. Now, I'll, I'll sort of put this on but it's very sluggish, which kind of surprises me because I played this on Android RetroArch and Soccer Kid plays amazingly well on it, but through this it doesn't. Hopefully maybe we get some updates, but um, I'm not going to hold my breath for that happening, to be honest. But it would be nice. I mean, the Arc OS system is supposed to be more compatible with 64-bit systems. You can hear it, it's really struggling to play a little bit. It's, yeah, it's just slow as well. Look, it's strolling along so slow it's just unplayable. Which is a shame, because this is a good fun game. It looks nice enough to, but it's unplayable on this. Disappointing. So yeah, just show you, you can access RetroArt by holding select and X. And it works quite well to escape out of the game. You just hold select and press start twice and you jump back out. So maybe before we finish up the video, um, we'll sort of show you, you can actually play Half-Life on this too. Now you need to download your own copy into the Half-Life folders. So this would be under Ports. Um, and there's a Half-Life file, so you need to have that in it. I haven't tested it out yet, so I don't really know. So if you go to your options, guys, you need to enable remote services. Um update so when you after you do your uh, initial ArcOS update on your memory card go in here do your update and it'll download the latest sort of version of it so that you've got all this and then you you can do all sorts of things i'll leave some links in the description to other sort of youtubers that have done some really good um sort of sort of work on this rather than me redoing the videos again so one last feature i'm maybe going to look at is that if you hold the select button it will play through random games that you've got in your list and it will give you a preview and if you want to play it you just press start if you don't like it you move on to the next one and it will play you can see um, it's just like a little preview of you know, all the games that you've got on which I think is a really nice touch if you see something you quite like and you want to play and um, you just jump straight into it I think wow how impressive is that so guys if you liked the video please like and subscribe and I hope you really enjoyed them. Maybe you do some more videos through time on this because there's a lot of things that it can do and it's it's quite time consuming to try and work it all out. But it's well worth the time if you love some of these systems and it's it's capable of doing so much. And thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you again next time.
This this actually blows me away. <laughs> Amazing. Eh? Wow. Bye guys. <laughs>